going wrong for the Chiefs. This is a snapshot of it right here. Just me after my fifth helping of stuffing yesterday. It's relatable. This is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Mercer Alberto, and it's here. The 2024 World Juniors are officially underway. Canada gunning for its first three-peat since winning five straight in 2005 to 2009. Taking out Finland in their tournament opener from Gothenburg, Sweden. We were scoreless late in the first until this epic sequence. Jaeger had that ticket away. Hoping it looks back in front. Great chance played across. Oh, oh, what a stop oh. by Rousseau. Matisse Rousseau with highway robbery in the Canadian crease. What a stop. Welcome to the tournament. Turnover, two on O. Oh. And Haminaho has got a wide open net. Russo reads the pass. You see him loading up. Oh, oh my gosh. The left hand comes out. He loads up the right leg. He's reading pass. But man, oh man. And less than a minute after that early save of the tourney candidate, Maverick Lamoureux fires one through traffic. It goes off Nate Danielson and through Nicholas Coco to open the scoring. Danielson was taken ninth overall by the Red Wings at this year's NHL draft and Canada's up one after one. Midway through the second, Jordan Dumay sprung out a break, but his shot draws iron, keeps it a one goal game. But not for long, it's just over two minutes later. Danielson with the strip feeds Owen Allard in front. His shot also hits the post. But this time Canada gets the fortuitous bounce. Off the post, off Coco and in. Canada doubles their lead. Just over two minutes after that, R2 Karki feathers one from the point and Alex Kaskameki with a beautiful deflection that beats Russo clean. Daft touch from Kaskameki to cut the deficit to one. Stayed that way until six and a half minutes into the third. Karki turns it over. Macklin Celebrini with a great chance in tight. He thinks the puck has crossed the line. Tough to tell, but it looks like the puck crosses the goal line before getting trapped under Coco's pad. And after review... After reviewing the play, it was determined that the puck completely crossed the goal line. We got a goal. Oh, he's got some West Macaulay in Yeah, him. a little flair for the dramatic. And so Celebrini, the 17-year-old, has his first World Junior goal. I love the lulling us into the negative call. And yet, celebration. I love it. That was great. Under three minutes to go, finish net empty. Connor Geeky spots Matthew Poitras, and he adds an exclamation mark. Canada's only player on loan from the NHL gives them a three-goal lead. Both teams traded goals after that, but Canada finishes with a three-goal victory. The 5-2 win comes exactly a year after. They were stunned by Czechia in their Boxing Day opener last year with the same score. It was obviously really exciting. You definitely some chills going out there, and you know we got a lot of support from, from Canadians, lots of Canadians in the stands, so that was pretty cool. And yeah, first game on the belt, it felt great. Yeah, I think the takeaways are, you know what, we, we handled some of the nerves and the expectations early on for, for a young group that's, you know, never experienced this. And I, th I think we take that positive. And then the other expectation is, you know, when, when, when we feel like we're losing our game, we've got to find a way to quickly get back to it. What line is going to get back to the way we want to play? And Canada's tourney will continue tomorrow as they take on Latvia and more Group A action. Our coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TSN. <laughs> We are just two weeks away from the NFL postseason and there's still so much to be determined. Like who's going to be the number one seed in both conferences? And who will win MVP? So let's talk biggest takeaways from a wild weekend that was. It would be weird to start anywhere else but in Baltimore. After the Ravens dismantled the team, everyone thought were the best in the NFL. The win put them a game ahead of Miami in the race for the top seed. And it was also Baltimore's ninth win in their last 10 games. Other 12 wins this season, the Ravens have won seven of them by 14 or more points. And all seven of those opponents are over 500, which is just bonkers. The team is elite both offensively and defensively. But Lamar is the man and the front runner for MVP in a lot of minds after what he did against San Fran. The overall numbers are not as good as his MVP year, but he's the best player on the best team. And if they win again against Miami next week to secure that top seed, the narrative is absolutely his. Meanwhile, Brock Purdy's case took a massive hit as he was absolutely putrid last night, throwing a career worst four picks and zero touchdowns, finishing with a 42.6 passer rating, which is another career worst. Time for the next takeaway. The Chiefs are mortal and more mortal than they've ever been. The Raiders went into Arrowhead and beat KC for the first time since 2020 and dropped the Chiefs to nine and six, which means they will finish with the lowest amount of wins in the Mahomes era. In general, Mahomes is having one of the worst seasons of his career. We're talking a career-high 14 interceptions. On pace for a career-high in sacks, he's thrown his second fewest total TDs in a season, 
and his yards and air yards per attempt are also a career low. No, no one wants to play against Casey because of what Mahomes can do. But for the first time since 2017, the road to the Super Bowl will not go through Kansas City. Now let's end this biggest takeaway segment by talking about the NFC's top seed race. The 49ers, Lions, and Eagles are all tied at 11 and 4, while the Cowboys are 10 and 5. Based on the schedules of all these teams, San Fran should have that one seed locked up. But if they have any slip up, Philly could pounce. With games against the lowly Cardinals and Giants left on their schedule, Dallas and Detroit on Saturday night is going to be electric. But based on how inconsistent these teams have been lately, it's anyone's guess as to who will be getting the first round by. And the penultimate week of the NFL regular season begins with Thursday Night Football, when the Browns host the Jets. With a win, Cleveland can clinch a playoff berth, for just the second time in the last 20 years. Kickoff is scheduled for 8.15 Eastern on TSN and CTV2. <laughs> time now for my favorite segment and yours, Why We Love Sports Today. Why We Love Sports Today. One of the most important aspects of any sport is the ability to handle pressure. And Tennessee Performance Volleyball seems to be really leaning into that with this fun and high stakes drill that seems to be emphasizing fundamentals. Oh, oh, oh missed it, watch it, ow. Oh, <laughs> no more. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Get it in. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> oh, uh oh, oh. Yes, clean off. <laughs> we need to start implementing this for the show. Like every line that I screw up, I need to have somebody here tossing bean bags or something. No, no, I can't deal with that kind of pressure. I changed my mind. I don't want it. <laughs> All right, Christmas Day is one of the marquee dates in the NBA regular season. Yesterday was no exception with five massive games across the association. And while the first four games on the slate were great, the one we need to focus on was the final game of the night, which saw the Mavs dismantle the Suns. With no Kyrie in the lineup, we saw Luka Doncic put the team on his back with one of the greatest statistical performances in NBA history. Not only did he rack up his sixth career 50-point game, he added 15 dimes, seven stocks, and went eight of 16 from behind the arc. No player has ever reached all of those marks in a single game before. Luka's 50-burger is tied for the third most ever scored on Christmas Day. He's one of just four players to ever score 50 on December 25th. He also single-handedly outscored KD and Booker. And Luka's dominance against Phoenix is nothing new. Since Phoenix went up 3-2 on Dallas in their second round series two years ago, Luka has scored at least 33 points in every meeting, except for a game where he left after three minutes due to an injury. Meanwhile, things are not going well for the new look Suns. Their vaunted big three have only played 24 minutes together all season, mostly because Bradley Beal has been constantly injured. Phoenix has lost three straight and nine of their last 12 and they are now a game under 500. And a Woj bomb over the weekend has indicated KD's frustration has been mounting, with Beal out and their underwhelming supporting cast. And after that report, KD struggled with just 16 points and six turnovers against the Mavs. But this has to end well, right? When KD's unhappy, nothing dramatic ever happens. I've never seen that before. And we've got an outstanding matchup for you tonight from the hardwood, featuring two of the top three teams in the West. SGA continues his MVP push, against the West leading T-Wolves. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on TSN. That's all for me today. Luke is going to be filling in for the rest of the week. I'll see you back here New Year's Day. Have a good one.